So the final speaker um, is, is a passionate advocate for business uh, in the far north of Scotland, uh, and that's Trudy Morris, who's the Chief Executive of the Caithness Chamber of Commerce. Trudy. Excuse me one minute while I just wet my whistle, as they say. Um, I wasn't sure how this um, session was going to go, so I, I haven't got a presentation, so I'm really just going to speak from the heart of what it's like to live in a nuclear community. Um, I'll just give you a bit of background um, to the chamber itself. Um, I don't know if many of you know about a chamber of commerce. Um, there is obviously one in Cumbria. Um, so we support businesses. Um, it's a membership organization, but the chambers are a worldwide network. But as um, a chamber, we're actually independent companies in our own right. So we're actually a small business um, in Caithness. Um, we've got 200 members. Um, and we were relaunched back in 2009, and that's when I went up to Caithness. So I, I'm essentially an incomer. Um, but as Bill said, um, I'm very, very passionate about um, the community that I live in. Um, so as a Chamber of Commerce, um, as I say, we're part of that, that wider network, but as an independent company, we have to um, make sure that we can survive. Um, so we were relaunched with the assistance of the NDA back in 2009. So previous to that, there was no full-time staff. Um, so with um, the Economic um, Development Agency as well, Highlands and Islands Enterprise and NDA funding, um, stakeholders within Caithness believed that there needed to be a strong business voice to really galvanize the business community together um, in light of de um, decommissioning of Dune Ray, to really try and get those businesses to actually think about diversifying away from Dune Ray, um, obviously with the, the timeline that we were working with at that point. Um, so it was relaunched in 2009, so I've been up there nearly um, 10 years now, coming up in January. Um, went up there as the first chief executive. For eight months, it was just me. Um, and then over the, these years, um, we've now got eight um, employees, including myself. Um, and we're actually sustainable as a, um, an organization. Um, so we don't get funding actually for our day-to-day -day operations. We do get funding and actually over these last nine years, we've leveraged in over 2.2 million pounds um, into the chamber to deliver different projects and, and um, a lot of that has actually been NDA funding as well. Projects that include um, skills programs um, to help diversify the Dunaray workforce away um, from obviously Dunaray in terms of when they actually leave, um, giving them, upskilling them and, and giving them opportunities um, in other areas. Um, we facilitate a transport forum, so there's a number of different things that we do as well as support businesses as well. Um, and I'm, I think from day one when I went up um, to Caithness, I was just blown away by um, the businesses that operate there. Caithness is probably quite understated, um, and I would say until we had a chamber, until some of the other things happened like the partnership, um, Caithness didn't really shout about the things that it, it, it's been doing over really, you know, decades, over 50, you know, years or more um, of actually working in a nuclear community. Um, so we've got, you know, highly skilled individuals, highly skilled businesses that are um, making all sorts of services and products, and actually they've not been shouting about it. Um, you know, we manufacture cameras that are in the deepest oceans, um, of the world in the Mariana Trench um, that are exported, you know, to the U.S. Uh, Navy. Um, this is all done from WIC. Um, you know, we've, uh, we're doing some really innovative work on the site. As a chamber, we believe um, in an energy policy that includes nuclear. Now, we can get mixed up between U.K. and Scottish government um, policy, and actually, to be fair, you know, and the chamber's apolitical, you know, it's not helpful um, because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're working with nuclear, we're decommissioning. Some of our companies are actually working on other sites across the estate. Um, and we believe in that mixed energy policy because, uh, you know, we need to have that balance across um, the different energy. Um, so 
the UK, the Scottish government policies can be unhelpful in that respect um, because it, we get mixed messages, there's not clarity. So I guess some of the key points that I want to get across um, today is really about having some clarity to some of this stuff. And I thought it was interesting, um, you know, Trudy was talking about, um, you know, you're really passionate about um, nuclear and the northern powerhouse not even having Cumbria. Um, in its, uh, in its sites. I guess for Caithness, um, one of the recent announcements is, uh, just really shows that there's no joined up approach um, with government in some of the policies that are made. Um, the contracts for difference for the renewables that was recently announced, we had tidal energy mixed up with offshore wind. Now, offshore wind is um, a developed technology now, but it was mixed up with tidal energy, which is a developing technology. So they were essentially competing against each other. Now, we have um, a tidal development in the Pentland Firth that is um, being developed at the moment. There's about six turbines in there. Roger talked earlier about um, it, the potential for 300 megawatts being generated. We have offshore wind in two developments. Um, with Beatrice Offshore Wind um, off about eight miles off, um, off Wick in Caithness, off the East Coast, um, in the Murray Firth. Um, and then um, Murray Offshore Wind has just won the contracts for difference. But Maygen, who are doing the tidal, lost out because essentially they were competing against each other. Now, these are developments that we're trying to, um, to get into Caithness, investment, jobs, to actually replace Dune Ray. So we've got a UK government um, energy policy that's not lining up. We've got the NDA that's giving money um, to socioeconomics, and we're very grateful for that, for the projects it's developed. We, we heard about Scrabster earlier and the investment and the difference that, ha that has made. And there's a number of projects in Caithness that have benefited from NDA fun funding, which we wouldn't have had. Um, things like the strengthening of the runway, and okay, that's for nuclear shipments, but it's a legacy that's being left for the community um, for us to be able to develop and hopefully um, get other things in on the back of that. Um, we've had money that has supported um, the development of uh, the Berriedale Braze, which we're, we're hoping is going to get started next, um, next year. That won't mean anything to you, but it's actually quite a, a nasty hairpin, um, which is one of our major routes into Caithness. Um, so, you know, we've got all these good things happening on this side, um, you know, with a socioeconomic policy um, and money from the NDA. And on this side, we've got UK government energy policy. There's no overarching um, plan. There's no um, joined up approach. Um, so my plea, and it's unfortunate there's no... Um, government ministers um, here today. <laughs> My plea is that, you know, all of us, and it includes Cumbria, because you have some of the same problems and the same challenges, is, is to go back to the people that are making these decisions. Let's have some joined up approach here so that we can, we can really make a difference. Because if we're doing it on the one side, but then wrecking it on the, on the reverse, then we're, we're always going to have this challenge um, of actually trying to make things better. Um, in Caithness, we've got a recent study showed that one in 14 actually um, of the working age population depend on Dune Ray or actually work at Dune Ray. There's 1,100 people at Dune Ray at the moment, um, 1,600 if you include the contractors. We've only got a population in, in Caithness and North Sutherland, which is what we term as the Dune Ray travel to work area, of about 30, 32,000 people. So that, that's a huge um, effect. Um, and uh, Jamie, you talked about, um, you know, we've got the opportunity for change, make, you know, um, within our communities. Um, and the, the coal industry and industries like that didn't have that opportunity. On the reverse of that, we could say, well, we've actually got a long death <laughs> because, um, you know, those industries closed, the community had to get on with it. Um, we keep getting um, timelines changed. Um, it was interesting, Jean, that you had up there that the interim end state for Dunaray is something like 2028. 
Actually, I think it's 2032, and it actually might go beyond that. So we're at the mercy of, of, of policy that changes, government um, policy that changes, um, and we have to try and meet those challenges um, and uh, you know, try and move forward. Um, and it's a huge challenge. Um, and I'd, I'm not a politician, I'm not a government minister, I don't know what the answer to some of these things is, and perhaps I'm making it too simplistic. But in the chamber, we have that overarching view of, of Caithness. You know, I actually live in the community, so I know what it's like um, to be in the community, but I can also see the business view, um, and I work on the partnership with the agencies, um, and uh, you know, can see some of the things and the challenges that they experience. But we're all working together, and we're all trying to have that joined up approach, um, and I think it, my plea and my oversimplistic view is that that needs to be up higher as well in terms of government looking at uh, what they're doing as well. Um, so I guess I've probably labored that point enough. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Um, but I think, you know, nuclear is very much part of the community that we live in. You can love it or you can hate it, but it, it's there um, and we deal with it. Um, and. I would probably say my opinion from speaking to people in Caithness is actually, you know, if, if government policy was different, you know, and somebody said, you know, let's have a new reactor, I actually think the community would actually welcome it because they've been brought up in it, um, they've been reliant on it, they're embedded in it, um, you know, and actually, you know, I'm still hearing people saying what's going to happen after it all goes, you know? Um, or, or some people say, oh, well, it will never go because we, it, it keeps going on and on and on. Um, so I would, I would argue that the community is very much pro-nuclear um, and they want to see companies still working in the nuclear industry. Um, and it's trying to see what those opportunities are. But we need to be doing other stuff as well so that we've got a good mix and a sustainable community going forward. Um, so I would just like to thank the NDA for the opportunity to stand up and talk, but also for the, for the commitment that they've made um, to the Caithness community and the projects that they've been supporting. And it is a bottom-up approach. Um, we come up with the projects um, as a community, um, and the NDA steps up um, with the money, um, and we'll continue to do that, and we'll continue to ask the NDA for money, um, and you know, um, it will make a difference but we need the other side of it making, um, joining into that so that actually our efforts um, are not um, stumbled um, by decisions by people that really don't have a clue of that bigger picture and what other agencies are maybe doing on this side. Um, so I'm going to leave it there, so thank you very much.